With prices surging and Americans struggling to keep up, the Federal Reserve takes a bold step to tame what seems like relentless inflation and raises interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point, its biggest hike in nearly three decades. We at the Fed understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. We're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down, and we're moving expeditiously to do so. Is this too much of a hammer from the Feds? I don't think so. I think it's a strong move by the Federal Reserve to attempt to regain control of the narrative. What it could turn out to be is that a little more action today portends a little less in the future. A little less what? Pain? A little less pain, a little less increase in interest rates in order to get the inflation job done. In fact, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell suggested the government likely won't make a habit of being this aggressive with interest rate hikes in the future. But he didn't rule out another significant increase in the coming months. When it raised interest rates a half a point last month, the Fed expected that would bring inflation down. But it kept climbing to a 40-year high. It was quite eye-catching, and, and we noticed that. This rate hike will affect millions of American households and businesses, pushing up the cost of borrowing for major purchases. For people who are first-time home buyers looking to get that mortgage right now, that's going to become much more difficult than it would have a few months ago. People who are in the market to purchase a car are going to have higher borrowing rates today than they did three months ago. Also feeling the pinch, people who are looking to tap into their retirement accounts soon. Their 401k balance is down by a lot, so they're going to have to maybe recalibrate on when they can retire. The rate hike comes on top of crushing gas and food prices, which have frustrated consumers in recent months, even forcing some to change their behavior. We're confined, you know, we're just kind of being kind of like kept prisoners in our own, our own little spaces because we can't afford to do anything. I'm so not used to this, eight gallons. For $40. That's kind of crazy. Even with this hardship, the Fed chairman says he hopes the government can raise interest rates without plunging the U.S. economy into a recession. We don't seek to put people out of work, of course. We, we never think too many people are working and fewer people need to have jobs. But we also think that you, you really cannot have the kind of labor market we want without price stability. So what can the average consumer do to deal with this rate hike? Analyst David Wilcox says right now it's really important not to overextend yourself credit-wise. Try to pay off your credit cards if you can, and don't borrow money for one-time big splurges like vacations or furniture purchases. Wolf? Brian Todd reporting for us. Thank you. Let's break all of this down with CNN business correspondent Rahel Solomon, Matt Egan, who's reporting live from the Federal Reserve, and our White House correspondent, MJ Lee. Matt. What more can you tell us, first of all, about how this rate hike will impact American consumers? Well, Wolf, this was a break-the-glass emergency move by the Federal Reserve. Inflation is on fire, and it's spreading. And the firefighters, the Federal Reserve, they got to the scene pretty late here. Now the Fed is moving aggressively, the biggest interest rate hike since 1994, all in an effort to get inflation under control. Now, for families, this means higher borrowing costs, credit cards, mortgages, car loans, student debt, appliances. The COVID era of free money is over big time. Now, hopefully, this means that prices will come back under control. That would be great news for families who are dealing with surging costs and everything from cars and clothes to food and, of course, gasoline. But this won't be easy. The Fed has to get this just right. Because if they don't act aggressively enough, inflation could stay hot or even get hotter. But if they do too much, they could accidentally cause a recession that costs millions of Americans their job. Wolf, the stakes here couldn't keep, be much higher. I know. It's such a delicate moment indeed. Rahel, uh, I want to dig deeper right now with you. If you're walking, let's say, into a car dealership or applying for a mortgage, what can you expect? Yeah, I mean, Wolf, when the Fed raises rates, it impacts the cost of borrowing both directly and indirectly. So uh, as we have heard, you know, the rates are going up. And so your cost of borrowing is going up. Let's talk about mortgages, for example. We've already seen a pretty dramatic spike in mortgage rates this year alone. Uh, one economist from Zillow putting it to me this way. About a year ago, the average home, Wolf, was about $290,000. So you put 5% down with a 3% rate, while your mortgage was about $1,600. Right now, typical home goes for about $350,000.
put 5% down, but your rate is 6.1% and your mortgage is now about 26.50, just a dramatic drop or dramatic increase rather in mortgage rates and mortgage costs. So the idea here being is that if you're in the market for a home, you may just rethink buying a home. You may think you want to wait it out for a few years, which is exactly the point. The Fed is trying to cool demand. It's trying to get us to spend less on these big purchases to hopefully reduce inflation in the in the longer term. But it doesn't make you feel good if you're a consumer and right now you need to buy or you'd like to buy. Yeah, good point. You know, MJ, uh, President Biden made an appeal today to the big oil companies over the sky high gas prices. What is he asking for and is it likely to make a real difference? Yeah, you know, this is just one more sign, Wolf, that the president is trying to pull out all the stops to try to lower gas prices uh, for American consumers. He wrote this letter to major oil refineries and basically raised two points. He said, one, he would like to see these companies really ramp up production. And two, he said uh, he wants to send the message that the, the fact that they are really profiting so much from this moment is really not acceptable. On the ramping up front, uh, he said, look, he knows that particularly during the pandemic, a lot of these companies had to shut down their refineries and really reduce their capacity. So he would like these companies to do everything that they can to bring some of these refineries back online. And then on the second point on these companies, uh, high profits, he said, look, at a moment when the American consumer is paying so much and going through so much to even just fill up their gas tanks, that it's really just not acceptable for these companies to enjoy these profits. Now, what the president said in this letter is that he is going to call on his energy secretary to convene an emergency meeting. The White House has also said that he might, uh, you know, use some other emergency actions to try to uh, get prices down, maybe the Defense Production Act, but we don't have the details. Uh, look, the, the White House has interestingly said that it is a patriotic duty for these oil companies to try to take these actions, uh, though if you're being cynical, they are oil companies, so not sure that a letter from the president is going to change the conduct of these companies in any real way. Yeah.